Hello, and welcome to the A to Z YouTube channel. My name is Toby, I'm the A in A to Z, and I'm in charge of songwriting, recording, and producing. Okay, I'm Ruben Zafra, the Z in A to Z. I'm in charge of mixing and mastering all the good things that Toby does. So, together, we are A to Z. Um, so we thought we'd try something different this week. We're um, going to talk together about uh, bass amp sims. So we've already done our guitar amp sims tier list. We did the drum library tier list. And now we are going to be doing bass amp sims. So what we've done here is I've got a, some clips. We've got um, two actual bass recordings and one MIDI bass recording. We've got Enrique playing on five minutes alone and we've got Max playing on duality and we've also got uh, Umansky bass playing a Children of Bottom song as well. So we're going to be trying all of those on the different amp sims we've got. All right, so I'm just going to list off what we're going to be uh, looking at today. We've got 16 we're going to be looking at. We have the Avid PSA 1. We've got Duality from Audio Assault. We've got the Bass Knob STD from Bogan Digital. We've got the Ampeg SVTV from Brainworks. We've got Saturn 2 from Fab Filter. We've got Amplitude 5 from IK Multimedia. Tonex from IK Multimedia. Rex Brown, Joey, Joey Sturgis Tones. Hellraiser by Joey Sturgis Tones. Joel Wanasek Bus Glue Bass by Joey Sturgis Tones. We've got ML Bass from ML Sound Lab. Dark Glass Ultra from Neural DSP. Parallax from Neural DSP. Amp Hub from STL Tones. S Tonality Will Putney from STL Tones. And Tone Hub from STL Tones. So it's quite a few there. Obviously there's a few on the market which um, we haven't, you know, won't be looking at today. Um, and as I said with the other ones, um, we're not giving our opinions on ones we've not used and not tried, because that's not fair. So those are not included here, but you know, if you make a bass amp sim and you want us to try it out, hit us up, send it, we'll give it a go. Sure. So Ruben, what, what, what are your thoughts on what, we, what we're looking at so far? What do you think, which, which ones stand out to you? Which ones are ones that you use? Um, I usually use, um, especially the Dark Glass. That's one of my favorites. Um, then I also use the PSA. I mean, not this one because it's just Pro Tools. But I use the Nembrini uh, Junior, I think it's called. It's basically the same, but in so I can use it outside of Pro Tools. And of course, I use Tonehub. I've, I've recently got Amphub, so now I'm trying to use it more and more, and I really like it. Yeah, it's it's, awesome. I'm going to be doing a, a video on Amphub soon. It's kind of one I've been sleeping on, um, and I got it recently, and it's it's like, oh my goodness, where's this been all my life? <laughs> <laughs> it, it is. Uh, it is really good. I really like it. There isn't actually a bass amp sim as such within there, but I have dialed in a tone which I think sounds cool for bass. Um, oh, that's it does awesome. have bass cabs as well, so we'll be having a good play with that one. It also has uh, the Zenzam pedal there on the amp hop, so it, that's quite nice. It sounds pretty pretty similar. Yeah, that's that's a good point, actually. I didn't notice that. I'll show you what I've got loaded in. It's, it's, it's gnarly. I'm sure. <laughs> Right, so let's go through. I've got them in alphabetical order of manufacture. Just seems like a logical way to go through. So the first one we've got here is the PSA 1. I've loaded up a preset here called Crunchy Bass. We'll listen to that and we'll flick between the, two, the three performances so we can hear how that sounds on those as it is. And then we'll have a quick dial as well. What do you think so far? Pretty sick. And on the first one, it doesn't sound like it's very distorted. It's not like crunchy. It's more like pushed a bit. If, if yeah, I think part sense. of that is probably the, um, the gain is just a little bit. If you look at the the actual waveforms, the uh, Enrique's one isn't quite as sausage fest as the other two are. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> so I think that, that that's probably a little just coming through a little bit lower. Um, and I think it's quite possibly lower output pickups on that one as well because Max's one is a dingwall um, and that has kind of savage pickups whereas Enrique's is a bit more kind of vintage bass. I think it might be a flying V bass he used on this one which is kind of more vintage output pickups so I think that'll mm -hmm. be part of it as well. So cool. Yeah. Yeah. 
Cool. So I'm just going to loop the Umensky, and I'll just I'll just uh, dial in and what the knobs actually do to affect the sound. It's a bit ridiculous then, doesn't it? <laughs> Distraction. <laughs> but yeah, I think that's I think that's pretty awesome actually, especially for a, a stock plugin. So where where do you think you'll put this on the tier list? For me, this will always be Thick Boy. Yeah, honestly. I think it is. I, I've, I've really I've not I've not used this plugin before. Um, I've seen it on Nail the Mix. Um, Buster used it, I think, on Alt on the guitars actually. And I yep. think Joe Satriani is using this for his entire guitar tone on an album coming up or, or that's out or something. I, I also wild. read that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I think it's like, I think it's a sleeper, that is. So um, yeah, I, I'll, I'll give it a thick boy as well. So the next one we've got is Duality by Audio Assault. Uh, I didn't rate Audio Assault very highly in the Amp Sim <laughs> um, uh, list video. So, um, uh, I'm just going to very quickly go through the interface on this one. It's it's kind of unusual because you've got a drive channel and the bass amp channel. I think that's why it's called duality because you've got a, a, a guitar amp and a bass amp together. And basically you use this to mix between the two and you can put it before or after the bass amp. So you can kind of have mm. the bass amp going into a guitar amp and then dial the two and mix them the two in together so yeah yeah i mean you, and because you've got the low pass on here as well the high pass on here sorry on here you can actually have it so it's just affecting the top end and not the bottom end mm -hmm. so you can distort the top and and just use a bass amp on the bottom but um so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to um roll loop enrique's bass and i'll dial that in a bit do you think that sounds good it does okay yeah. cool That's probably as close as I'm going to get to a sound I like um, out of that one. It's uh, it feels like it's working uh, against me though, you know. Yeah, it, it, it's weird because I, I saw you moving knobs and was doing weird things. Yeah, wasn't it? Like I, I wasn't expecting it to be that crazy when you turn just the high pass on, <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's it's very strange. I don't know if there's like an auto gain thing happening there, maybe. That's then kind of making like the high end go really loud when you go with the high pass, but yeah, um, yeah I'm not not a fan. Of, I think I had when I first got this, I used it for like a week and then just didn't use it. Anymore. This is like the first time I've touched it in several years um, because I'm not a huge fan. So I think that one is probably a wussy. It's it's weird. Mm. I I I, mm, I think the sound was actually okay, but. It's so hard to dial in, maybe, that's a bit woozy, like you say. Yeah, yeah. And there's kind of a lot of sort of nasty, artifacty fizz happening in the top end as well that I wasn't a fan of. That's true. Um, it just feels like it would take a lot of EQing to actually get it to sit nicely in a mix. Maybe just to blend 
just to have a nasty tone to blend maybe that would be cool yeah I, i think that's probably where it would would shine best is if you had like a really really awesome tone and then you just want the kind of little bit of filth in the top end <laughs> yeah um Yeah, okay, so then we're going to move on to the next one. So this is um, the bass knob from Bogren Digital, which we've seen a few times on the channel, of course. Um, so what I'm just going to do, I'm just going to uh, loop. We're going to loop through and we're going to jump between the different recordings so you can hear how it sounds on different, two different basses and on the MIDI bass as well. And I'll do that on the clean channel first and then we'll hear it on the dirty channel. <coughs> I got those the wrong way around. I did the dirty channel, then the clean channel. <laughs> wow, man. It sounds very different to be just one knob and just trying three different basses. It sounds really different. It does, doesn't it? Yeah, it's, and it sounds great on all three of them, I think. Uh, I mean, it yeah. sounds like... The, even Yeah, on the Umansky, it sounded really, really great. Um, I think it really suited that really nicely, but it's, I think it sounded really good on all three of those basses. Yeah, and depending on the input, like you said, it like pushes it a bit more or less and it's quite nice mm. even yeah. on the clean channel yeah the clean uh, i mean if we go back onto um the umansky one and i dial the gain up high on the clean one <laughs> It gets pretty filthy even on the clean channel. <laughs> it does, dude. This sounds amazing. I love it. Yeah, I think. I, yeah, I think this um, Bogan Digital are doing some awesome stuff right now, and I got to address the fact that people are probably going to think I'm a Bogan Digital simp right now because everything they do, I just absolutely love it. But it's just, it's honest. It's it, honestly, I love what they're putting out. Like, it is what it is. It is what it is. Like the yeah, I just, they just make. It's not my fault that. Jens is really good at making plugins and guitar tones and drum sounds because I just love them. They're great, you know. So true. So this one gets thick boy from me. Same for me. Yeah, and um, if I'm honest, it's pretty much the only bass amp sim I've used since it came out. You know, I think huh. on our on our channel we've only used one other bass amp sim so far since this one came out <laughs> um which is a video which is coming out very soon or maybe it's already out who knows uh anyway next one this is um i think i've got i'm pretty sure i got this one for free and it was like i don't even don't know whether it's like always free or whether it was just like some special deal or something but it's an ampeg from um brainworks have you used this one reuben um very little actually okay. um, yeah. i think a band i was working with used it and i tried it It was okay, since what I can remember, but let's see how it sounds. Cool, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to run through um, Enrique's playing and we'll dial this in a little bit and see how it sounds. That sounds really great. Once I changed the um, the input, the volume and the power soak, because essentially the volume is um, di is uh, distorting the power stage as well. So then when you power soak, you're getting that distortion without it going too loud. What do you think? It sounds pretty good. I think this would be more like um, the Bogren Digital is this one, but with steroids for me. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, way yeah. simpler so. because it's just one knob, you know, and you can go anything from super clean to ultra distorted and yeah 
Yeah, yeah. I think this one you can get a kind of similar kind of sound um, with a bit of dialing in. Um, I think you would have to change. You'd have to run a different IR afterwards as well if you want to get kind of more bograny. Um, yep. And you'd probably want to run a drive in front of this as well. But mm -hmm. you know, I think this, I think this would probably be good for like punk or like old, old school rock or old school metal. Um, I don't think modern metal. I don't think it just got enough girth or guts to it. Um, yeah. I think for this this one for me it's an I. It is. And again, it it was free, so can't really complain for free, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds pretty good to be free, honestly. I think so, yeah. All right, so the next one we've got here is not exactly an amp sim as such, but I asked a few friends what they recommend I have on this video, and he mentioned Saturn by Fab Filter. What do you think? Have you used Saturn as a amp sim as a bass sim? Not really. No. Um, I, I've used it for like heavy distortion thing, but not like main bass. Um, mm. So that'd be an interesting. There's actually, if you go into the presets in here, there are some guitar amps on there um, mm. and some effect. Oh, stay out of my whammy. What's that? Um, huh. <laughs> so this one is called Cranked 70s Stack. Um, and I'll just show you what that sounds like. I'll, just, I'll very quickly just flick through the, diff the three different bass performances. So that's exceptionally gnarly. <laughs> it <laughs> like, is, and I think both uh, all three sound pretty similar with this setting. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Then there's also this one here, bass DI heft. So that is not quite as, as gnarly. And I feel I feel like what it would work maybe if you blended those two presets into a bass cab IR. What do you think? Yeah, um, I mean, impressed, actually. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get open up to tonality Will Putney and I will turn off the amp. We're having, so we're running just the cab and we'll hear what Saturn into the tonality cab sounds like. And I'm going to try the other preset on Saturn as well, see how that sounds. Just the same thing again that you said about where it sounds basically the yeah. same on all three. <laughs> very honky as well. Yeah, very honky. Yeah, I I, mean, I think that might be the, the cab that, um, that I had on tonality is a bit honky, but um, I don't think I necessarily recommend that as a legit option, but I feel like if you, and because, you know, if you were going to buy an amp sim, I wouldn't recommend going for, for a Saturn because for what it is, it's quite expensive for, if you wanted to use it just for a bass amp sim as a plugin, it's really great. Um, and it doesn't sound particularly amazing for a bass amp sim, but it's not really what it's designed for. So I just wanted to include it. You know, I feel like it's probably a blender. It is for me. Yeah. Uh, and I've seen, again, uh, Buster on Nail the Mix using it and blending that with other options. So I think he had like, uh, there was one where he had like three different uh, bass amps sounds that he blended together and one of them was just Saturn. And so that kind of situation, I think it works, but on its own, it's a bit weak. Yeah, I also used it more like a finalizer thing, like just put it on the, on the bus and just tweak just the right band than you want yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that's I, I i tend to put it on like on guitars as well on the guitar bus um so just kind of add some filth to the mids yeah um yeah okay well that it was an experiment so i thought i'd really include that one so the next one we've got in the list is um amplitude five again this one i didn't particularly rate it very well in the amp sim tier list um, I think it's kind of a frustrating one because there are some good sounds in there. It's just that it's quite hard to kind of coax those out, you know? Yeah, exactly. So I've got here, we've got the SVX Pro, which is a rack mounted Ampeg, and that is going into a four by 10. So again, I'm just gonna flick between the three 
uh, DI performances and see how that sounds. So obviously it's quite a clean kind of sound rather than something a bit more distorted. But what, what are your first thoughts, Ruben? Um, um, I, I liked it a lot. I expected this to sound in... I mean, I expect uh, an SVT plugin to sound like an SVT MPEG, you know? And it sounds quite similar. It has the character and, and everything. Yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah. I think, um, I think it's right. Um, let's just try dialing the gain up a little bit. Yeah, I, I think that's pretty great. It is. Yeah, and it's that it wasn't it wasn't very difficult to dial in to get a good sound no. that I liked. And again, I would I would probably want to go like more gain, but that would you know, and even if, if it was a real, if I was using a real ampeg, then I would have to put a pedal in front of it if I wanted to get that extra gain, which exactly. is fine. I mean, you've got tons of pedals to choose from on here, so it's not like that's a difficult thing. So I mean, we could, for example, there we go, a rat. Yeah. Everyone loves a rat on a bass, so. I'm just going to bring the gain down a little bit here. Let's hear how that sounds. Yeah, that sounds right. I, just, I actually prefer when I used my Randall and a, in my Randall a bass amp in real life and a real rat. I think I preferred that sound, but it was, you know, it's definitely in the ballpark. Yeah, I like it. I would use like an SD1 thing, like the one that's just on the left. a lot of clank to it doing that hasn't it yeah man i'm very impressed with this one mm, that's actually really cool i really like this so uh where would you think we're gonna rate this one i guess gnarly because um i i um i see myself using the other ones before this one mm. but i think i could actually get a good one from this a good song from this yeah this sim yeah, I I think it takes a little bit of tweaking to get it to where you want. I mean, I didn't even touch the cabs, and there's there's quite a few cabs there as well. Um, and but you know you've got a lot of choice there in terms of there's like three different uh, Ampeg heads that I've got in that, in that Ampeg pack, um, and you know the different pedals and stuff. So there's quite a lot of options to try. And if we had a bit more time to tweak, I think we could get something really really sick sounding. So I think I'm yeah. going to agree with you. I think that's a gnarly for me. I just feel like the user interface needs work still. The next one is Tone X. Now what I've loaded up here is a, a profile I made. Or I made it at the same session that we did Duality. So when I got Max's DIs, I ran them through my Randall and a rat with, I think it was a pod mic and an SM58 on it. And I then immediately did a Tone X profile. So that's what this sounds like. So let's hear that on Max is playing. What do you think, Ruben? Um, I reckon the sound. I, I think it's, it's the same as you sent me, right? For the, the yep. it is quite good. I like it, and it's amazing that it's an SM58 and a pod mic. You know? Yeah, I know, I know. I mean, that's <laughs> the thing. Is like, 
it might be that this, when we listen to Enrique and, and the Umansky ones, that it's not necessarily quite the exact right tone for going mm -hmm. with those performances. But what I will say is this is exactly the same as what I use on the duality on Max's playing. So the limitation on Tone X is not the software itself, it's the capturing. So if you're using Tone X and you hear a bass amp sound and you think, this sounds naff, it's because the person who dialed in, dialed in a naff tone. <laughs> 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 um, so, I mean, for me, it's a thick boy because it sounds exactly like whatever it's capturing. So Indeed. as long as you're capturing something absolutely awesome, Tone X will sound absolutely awesome. Yeah, I guess it's the same as the camper, you know? You have awesome tones and then you have like, meh, profiles exactly yeah and that's the thing is I, i kind of expect this to happen on tone net there's like everyone's sharing their their presets and it's very very hard to find good ones because everyone's putting them up there whether they're good or not there's no filter um so it's kind of a tough thing but uh if you find people who are making really awesome tones then that's that's great you can download those and have a, have a play and stuff also if you have the tone x max there is this gk bass pack and some of these are actually really cool so for example if we listen to the Enrique one I think that was mental clarity I think it was So there's, there's some usable tones there as well. I think of the very... ones that are included with IK and the this GK pack is probably the better of them. What do you think, Ruben? I haven't played much with this, but I it, they, this one sounds pretty cool. They are very clean. I guess um, I would need to tweak it a bit, maybe with some pedal in front or something. Mm. But to be like the clean sound, it's pretty awesome. Mm, I, yeah. could, I, I see myself using this one like for a uh, regular tone and then blend in some nasty stuff just to have a clean low end and some good pick attack. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I agree with you on that. Um, and again, I, the thing is as well, obviously the Tone X can actually be loaded as a uh, amp within Amplitude. So then you can uh, load up your pedals and, and different cabs and stuff in front of it if you want to. Yeah, that's insane then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that was that one's really great. I, Uh, I haven't used it much for bass at the moment simply because I haven't done a huge amount of captures for it um, and I just haven't spent the time going on Tonet to look through for other people's captures of bass amps and stuff um, mm. and Bogren is just so good. <laughs> it is. <laughs> um, but yeah, I will be spending some time at some point getting the, my bass amp out again and getting some more captures going on that. The next one we've got is Bass Forge Hellraiser. Now, my first thought is with this one <laughs> It's that the interface is mega cringe. <laughs> <laughs> um, it might be just, you know, maybe that's just my opinion, but um, I think that, yeah, I just think this whole like Hellraiser demon fuzz thing is just, you know, <laughs> I think it's yeah, cringy. Yeah, it's, it's weird. But uh, that being said, let's hear how it sounds. <laughs> We're going to flick through the three different performances and hear how it sounds on those. a lot of uh, filth and clank happening on this one i mean there's a clank dial here which is 100 so i guess you're <laughs> gonna have plenty of clank <laughs> yeah i hear this one very joey ish you know like it very is, yeah. joey tone yeah 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 which is not a bad thing <laughs> no it's not it's not i'm not, not saying it in but um, in any bad way there's a lot of controls you've got um the fuzz on there you've got um the ability to load up different um cabs there's also uh eq one thing i really like with this one and the, the other baseboard which we'll be looking at in a second is you've got this um crossover limiter compressor type thing where you can actually have like basically multi-band compression so you've got something going on on the low end different to what's going in the top end so you can like limit the low end and compress the top end and then choose where the crossover is which i think is really cool oh yeah quite interesting 
actually yeah yeah so i mean if we go if we go on the max one i'll just di i'll just um di try dialing it in a little bit and see how it sounds <laughs> So you can hear how it's, it's affecting the low end and the top end differently. Yep. So I think it's really cool mm. that it's got that feature built in to the amp sim. Do you know, the only other one I've seen that has something like that is the uh, the Rex Brown one, which we'll be looking at in a second. But overall, what are you thinking? Um, I'm not. I, I don't like it that much. This one. It's a bit tough to um, to dial in. I think. Um, I tried it once, and. It wasn't for me. I know it, it, it would be cool for someone else, but mm, this one is not the one for me. Yeah, I think it's getting a bit dated now as well because it's been around a while, isn't it? Yeah, indeed. Yeah, I think this one for me, it's kind of a week. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. agree. All right, so the next one. So we've got the Rex Brown uh, Bass Forge. I'm a, I'm a massive Pantera fan, so I'm all about anything to do with uh, Rex or, or Dime when it comes to tones and stuff. So this one's, it, yeah, it was, uh, this was kind of a no brainer for me when it came out. Uh, it's got similar controls to the Hellraiser. You've got um, pedals, amp, cab. You've got effects on this one with bass, chorus and reverb. Why would you put reverb on bass? <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? I, I mean, maybe if you've got like an isolated bass part where there's like, or a bass solo, you might want reverb on it. Um, the rest of the time no and then you've got a parametric eq on this one which is actually which actually works really well and then you've got the similar thing with the um the crossover oh, what does that actually call it on here i just call it a limiter okay so you've got the the limiter with the crossover on it um and you've got the option for compression or limiting same with the i imagine it's exactly the same as the one in hellraiser okay so here we have the rex brown um from joey stoder's tones and we're going to hear how it sounds on three different di's pretty gnarly what are you thinking i like this one yeah. uh, better than the hellraiser you know yeah um, it has more definition on the on the distortion for me i, I like this one more mm. yeah yeah I, I agree it sounds more like an amp than hellraiser does whereas hellraiser is just kind of like a almost like an effect to put a bass into a mix whereas yeah. this sounds like you'd you'd enjoy playing your bass through this more exactly um and it sounds yeah, it, I mean, the kind of if you think about uh, Pantera, we're talking we're talking vintage music now, really, really. You know, a ninety mm -hmm. mid to early nineties. That's over thirty years ago. You know, <laughs> <laughs> well, about yeah, about thirty years ago. So we are talking older kind of sounds. So you know, um, and I think it nails that. Um, and you've got, you've got, I love the fact that here you've got clean and nasty. So rather than having two channels, you don't have like a, a, a clean channel and a dirty channel. You can basically blend between them. So if I open up the Enrique one. So it's almost like you're just blending between the two channels, which I think is really cool. But I would love to be game matched, you know, like it, when you were blending in, it would be the same volume all the time. Yeah, 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 that would be that would be really good. Like an auto gain feature would be really nice, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah. But I think overall, I think this one's pretty gnarly. Yeah, I agree. Cool. Cool. So the next one we've got here is another one from Joey Sturgis Tones. This is the uh, Bus Glue Bass Joel Wanasek, um, which 
in my on the, on the face of it seem more like a mixing plugin than a bass amp sim but it does actually have some bass amp sim stuff going on inside so basically down here where it says grit you have three different distortion types which essentially makes into a bass amp sim as well so um and you can you can drag this up and down to adjust your gain you can also and uh, much like with the the tone for the bass forge plugins you can actually change the amount of compression happening on the top and on the bottom as well so if we just for example pull this down here like this on the top and the bottom uh, I'm just gonna flick between the, the, the three settings on here as well as the three DI's and hear how it sounds What are you thinking, Ruben? Um, I'm impressed, <laughs> actually. I, I, I used a lot of the Joel Wanasek uh, Bass Glue series, but I didn't use this one a lot. And I think it's pretty powerful now that I see mm. it, because it's like an L1 with distortion built in. Yeah, with, yeah, and yeah. Separating, separating the top and bottom, and it's quite good. Yeah, I think like you've basically got like an A is kind of a, a bright distortion, B is clean, and then C is like a, um, a dark distortion. So you've got quite a few options there from within the, the little plugin like that, and I, I really like it. I mean, I use it if I'm mixing, which I don't do so much these days. I uh, I do actually use this a lot on my bass bus. I don't, don't tend to use the grit because I'll, I'll use a bass amp sim and then put this afterwards. But you could totally use this as a bass amp sim, you know? Yeah. So what, where would you put this on the on the tier list? Do you think? I, I guess ignorantly. I, I need to check this one out more and experiment with it. But I, I see a lot of potential in this one. Mm, yeah, I think this one's pretty gnarly. And uh, there was like a special deal when I got this, where I got it for like nine dollars or something. So an wow. absolute bargain. Um, so that one, that's that one. The next one we've got is from ML Sound Lab. I don't hear many people talking about this one. I hear people talking about the company, but not this amp sim. And uh, when, I, when it came out, I got it straight away. And I think it was like my go-to for quite some time. Basically, it's got two different heads. So you've got like the head and the rack head. Um, you've also got a pedal board. So there's some effects on there as well. And there's a whole bunch of presets. I've just set this one to bass switch engage because who doesn't love kill switch? Um, so we'll hear how that one sounds between the three performances. Hmm. That's hmm. Uh, without the drive engaged. So if we go back to the Enrique one and we engage the drive, That gets pretty fat. Indeed. What do you think? Um, I'm not liking this one very much. I think it's very case dependent. Like, um, uh, with the human sky, it was pretty cool, but I didn't like this one much with the Enrique one. Mm. Yeah, that's fair enough. I think uh, I think this one. Yeah, I think it's just kind of alright because it it's good at what it does, but it's not necessarily the right tool for every occasion. Yeah, I feel like this one is more for modern stuff or modern basis, maybe. Because as we said, Enrique is, is like more like a passive one and not very high output. And this one doesn't sound very good with this amp sim. Yeah, yeah, I think it takes more playing with to get that sort of real bite to it. So yeah, yeah. that's fair. So the next one we've got is one that I have not used before, but I know that Ruben uses a lot which is the Dark Glass Ultra. Yeah, it's uh, also very case dependent. You know, it depends a lot on the DI, but it usually sounds pretty cool. And the ability, when you have the ability to change to the vintage, 
and with more like more soft stuff um, it shines i like this plugin it's very versatile mm, okay um so uh, i'm just gonna load up a, pl uh, a preset on here any re recommendations on a preset to try Mm, I don't use presets with this one. No. So, mm, so where I don't would know. you normally dial this one in? Um, I would go from the default and then tweak, especially the low mids. The, they, and when you have it way too much, they, it creates like 200, 300 ish thing that I don't like it much. And I tweak that one and the drive, especially. Those okay. are the two main things that mm, make or break the tone. And then. Of course, you can tweak other stuff, but that, those two are my starting points to change. Yeah, sure. Okay, well, let's just, let's give it a listen. I will listen to all three, and then uh, I'll, I'll stay on one and try and dial it in a little bit. I think it sounds great on Umansky. It does, yeah. Uh, and I think it makes sense because I believe um, a lot of the submission audio's built-in distortion and amp sounds are actually based on either this plugin or the real pedal. I can't remember, but it's definitely dark glass they use for all their uh, amp and distortion tones on the submission audio stuff. So it would make sense that it works well with their MIDI bass. Yep. The, I, I love it. I mean, it's it's my main thing to go to. Um, I may be biased or something, but I think it's it's quite good. I am very versatile, very uh, powerful and very modern if you need to, but you can also go like lighter as well. And I, I like this one a lot. Yeah, yeah. I, like, I mean, again, I've only literally just downloaded this um, today um, to have a try with. But I know the reason why is because um, I know that you use it a lot on on your mixes, and then quite often I'll send you a bass tone and a DI, and you say, "Oh yeah, yeah, I blended in with dark glass." You know, <laughs> yeah, always. I, I always like to have like a blend of what you send me, and then I usually, basically, always use um, dark glass blended in as well. Yeah. Even if it's like very uh, subtle, but yeah. I actually have a kit for a clone of the B7, um, the B7K, uh, and I just need to get around to actually getting the soldering iron out and building it. Um, and I'm hoping that one day I'll be able to send some bass tones over to Ruben uh, <laughs> using my pedal and a real amp, and he'll go, oh, I didn't have to blend in dark glass in this one. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to, actually, would love to. That's what I'm hoping for. <laughs> it is a thick boy. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, the next one's another neural DSP one. This one is Parallax, and it's very different um, to any of the other uh, ones, the way that it works, because it's essentially like um, three different areas which you modify in different ways so you've got like the low end will be compressed and then the middle and the top will be distorted am i understanding that correctly yep you you are yeah and then you've obviously got an eq after that as well and you've also got the cab sim on there as well so i've just loaded up this nolly grind um, preset which i think is really cool and we will switch out between those I think overall that one works best on the more modern sounds. Yeah, exactly. I think this one is more for modern stuff. You can tweak it to make it cleaner and 
be able to work with um, less heavy or modern music but it's more difficult for me to get a usable tone from this one if you need something modern this is perfect but if you need something a bit more cleaner or, or it, it's not the one for me at least so what's your rating on that one do you think overall i guess it's a it's a gnarly because um, i don't see it as a thick boy because it's not that versatile for me it's either works or it doesn't but mm. if it works it works very well so i think for me it feels more like it's a mixing tool than it is an amp per se yeah uh, mm. and i think it's a very very good mixing tool but i just don't feel like it's necessarily something you would sit and connect your bass up and play through um yeah. like you would with you know with rec the um the dark glass or like the rex brown ones or something like that but yeah, yeah exactly. i agree i think it's kind of it's gnarly it's very good it's just not and i think it's very very good for mixing i just don't think it's necessarily great for, for playing and, and uh, monitoring through so exactly. the next one we want to try is amp hub and again i mentioned this earlier that it's not actually technically an a bass amp that i've got set up but it does it is, it is it is pretty nasty. <laughs> so, so when you go through the um, the amps, you've got amps to choose from. There's no bass amp there, um, but you know I like putting basses through oranges, so I, I open that one up. There are, however, bass a uh, bass amp cab, um, which is an Ampeg six by ten, and I put a two hundred two and a fifty seven on there, and then we have a good old rack going in the front. So let's hear how that sounds on the three different uh, performances. <laughs> I think maybe the gain's a little bit overbearing, but um, I think that's pretty tasty. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't think I would use this one as a main tone, but for blend, it would be awesome. To yeah, have I would this probably want to have this with a clean. Yeah, exactly. So, like for example, you've got, as you mentioned, um, was it the Sun's Amp? Yeah, there it is. So you've got the Sun's Amp. So I would probably load up two instances of this and have that kind of going more clean, and then have this absolute filth going along next to it. <laughs> exactly. Um, I need to experiment more, but for me it's like gnarly. Yeah, I think I agree. I think I think if it actually if they incorporate some actual bass amps into this in the future, it would mm. upgrade it to the thick boy. But that's the great thing with amp hub is there's a new amp added every month, so I yeah. think that's really cool. Um, yeah, so I, I, would, I would agree with you. I think that's a gnarly. So we've also got um, tonality Will Putney. Now what I really love with this one is that there's the album bass tone. So you can go into here and you can go, oh, what? which um, album did Will Putney do that I really like the bass tone on? Uh, oh, this one here from the Unforgiving Arms of God. There we go. Yeah, here we go. Again, it's very reactive to how much gain is going from the pickup, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. For me, this one is the same as Parallax. It either works or it doesn't. For yeah. me, at least. Yeah. And there's quite a bit you can do to tweak on this one. I mean, obviously, it's based on Ampeg, so the interface is very similar to that of the Ampeg that we used earlier. Um, what's kind of cool with the cabs, again, you've got like an IR for each of the album tones, but you can also run a normal kind of match a cab and and then dial in drag the microphone around there's quite a few options in there obviously you've got four guitar amps as well so there's a lot there a lot of options there and i i, I really like it. i've actually been using this a lot as just a cab sim and then running like a bass uh, tone into this and then using this um as the as the cab basically so i think that's where it really shines but the, the amp itself is really great as well. But as, as you say, it's very reliant on uh, what kind of style you're playing, what kind of gain you've got going on, the pickups and stuff, so. Yeah, exactly. So what do you, where would you put this one? Do you think gnarly? Uh, eh, it would be between gnarly and A for me. Okay, well, I'm going to push it up to gnarly because I really like it. <laughs> okay, fair enough. So I think that's where it goes for me. <laughs> so it's, <laughs> a, an, it's a gnarly from me and an A from Ruben. And then lastly, we have Tone Hub. So I think one thing I want to just preface on this one is that 
it is really geared to, again geared towards guitars rather than and basses and because of that it's actually quite difficult to find the bass tones so like some of the packs don't have any bass tones and so you will open up a bass uh, a pack and you'll scroll through oh no there's no bass in here go to the next pack no no bass in here scroll to the next pack oh here's a bass oh there's one bass tone in here and it's, it's difficult to scroll through and find um, what I would love to see on this one is if you could go to the top of the packs and it has like here would be like my favourites and you click on that one and it just lists all your favourites I think that would be a really cool feature um, indeed sadly it doesn't really awesome. that, so there are quite a few good tones in here and I had a quick play earlier and this is the, my favourite of the ones that I was um, going through so I think this one's a good a representation of the kind of tone, sounds you can get from it so let's give this one a listen got a nice bit of clank it's quite relatively clean kind of tone really but still got a tiny bit of clank to it yeah i, I like the low end especially it's very very big but controlled i i, I like the low end of this one a lot mm, yeah yeah it's, it's, it does sound really good and i think for, because in tone hub you've got the stomps here you could very easily choose oh look let's pick up all three overdrives on all five overdrives on you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah exactly um, yeah. So there's plenty of options for distorting if you wanted to and it sounded really great on all three my only criticism i think is that like somehow on the umansky one it made it sound more midi mm, true um, so I don't know. <laughs> uh, maybe it works better on real uh, bass than it does on MIDI bass. So that's my thoughts on that one. Um, yeah. What do you think overall with Tone Hub as a as a bass amp sim? As a bass amp sim, I like it a lot for guitars, as you know. I'm a big fan of of Tone Hub on guitars, but it's what you said about there's not many bass tones to go and to choose from. So yeah. It, and this one, for instance, sounds very cool, but I would love to have more options. So it may be an eight. Yeah, I think like my, my three favorite uh, tone up packs, the ones that I recommend the most, I don't think any of those mm. have got bass amp tones in them at all. So if you wanted to have like a, a collection of, uh, of tones and you wanted to include bass in that, you're looking at a minimum of four packs, really. If you get the three that I really like, which is uh, Colin, Jason and Josh Middleton, then yeah. you've still got to get a bass one as well. You know? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's yeah. So that, that's my thoughts. I think for bass, it's I. Yeah, exactly. I was going to say the same. So that's our uh bass amp sim tier list and this is my daughter symphony she wants to say hello you gonna say hello <laughs> <laughs> so, so cute i'm really, really interested to know what you think um and you know drop a comment below to let us know which bass amp sims we missed out which ones we should try um which ones are your favorites which ones we got wrong you know i want to hear all of that and of exactly. course if you want to see more of these kind of videos then make sure you hit that that like and subscribe as well but thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time Bye guys. Should we try that again with the with it not bypass? <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Why is that, that would be great. <laughs> yeah, that would be great, wouldn't it? Why is